Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we want to bless your name. We want to thank you for everything. Thank you for all things. Thank you for bringing us back, oh God, into this very program, the moment of truth, and set our times in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, today, oh God, as we preach your word to every soul around the globe, I pray that in every nation of the world, where they are hearing us now, you bless us specially and mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Once again, I want to welcome you into another edition of the moment of truth in his presence. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Today, by the fair grace of God, we want to continue with our series on the heavenly reward by looking at part two of the series. So the theme of our message today is heavenly reward, part two. Our test remains the same. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. I read. For you must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone of that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Praise the Lord. That's Second Corinthians chapter five, verse number ten. Among other things. Heaven is a place of final and eternal reward for all our activities here on earth. Heaven is a place of the final and eternal reward for all our life activities. According to our text today in 2 Corinthians 5.10, that place of eternal reward is where the judgment seat of Christ is located. Last week, I told you something. That there is a difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the white throne judgment. Anybody that appears before the white throne judgment after this contemporary earth, after this contemporary life, all of us will live this life one day. Either to heaven or to hell. Anyone that appeared before the white throne judgment will spend his or her eternity in hell. There is no remedy. But we are now talking about uh, the judgment seat of Christ. This is a place of reward for every born again child of God. We are going to be rewarded for our life activities while here on earth we dwell. So, I pray for myself and I pray for every era of this world today, in every nation of the world where you are hearing us, that on the last day, the Lord will count us all worthy to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded. For our good deed in this world, in the mighty name of Jesus. Under the pattern of our series on the heavenly reward, we look at some of the life activities that can earn us great reward in heaven. We started by looking at two, so willing and then endurance. Today, as we continue with this series in part two, we will look at another two bases for our heavenly reward, which is, number one, financial inputs, and then number two, fasting and prayer. So let's start for number one now, which is, of course, number three in the old series. Financial inputs. Among other things, heaven is a designated place for our reward 
for every money we spend for the sake of the enlightenment of the kingdom of God on earth. Every money we spend, either in our local currency or in the international currency, every is a place, apart from the reward we are going to get here on earth, in terms of blessings, but in heaven, we shall be heavily, heavily rewarded, heavily rewarded in heaven. For every money we spend here on earth, for our life, for our activities in enlarging the kingdom of God. No wonder Apostle Paul said, I will spend and be spent. All for the sake of the gospel. Because he knows ultimately that he will be handsomely rewarded in heaven for all his financial investment in the propagation of the gospel. The best investment we can back upon that has eternal value is to invest in the propagation of the gospel. Second Corinthians 12 15. 2 Corinthians 12 15. And I will gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Paul said, Whether you love me or not, I will spend for you. I will spend to make sure that you remain in Christ. I will spend for the cause of the gospel. That is it. Though in this world, there is huge reward for every investment we make in the Christendom. In form of our tithes, our offering, our special donation, our sacrificial givings, and what of you. In this world, we shall be awesomely rewarded. But then, we are talking about the reward in heaven now. The heavenly reward. Don't be deceived. Every soul that is warned through your financial investment, you are going to get a reward. If you use your money for the propagation of the gospel and through which 500 souls were converted and they get to the kingdom of God, over all the 500 souls, you will be rewarded and I will be rewarded. No wonder the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. Matthew 6, 20. He says, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We are neither mold nor rust nor corrupt. And we are things do not break through nor see. Can we see? We say we should lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. That is Matthew 6, 20. To lay up ourselves treasures in heaven is to use our money for the propagation of the gospel work here on earth. To use our money to build churches where souls will be saved. To use our money to train missionaries in the mission schools, in the Bible college. To use our money to send missionaries abroad for the propagation of the global work of the ministry. This is an investment that has eternal value. So when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, every money, every cover we spend, every dollar you spend, every pastor you spend, you will be rewarded for it. For the cost of the gospel, you will be rewarded. I pray that the grace to spend our money for the propagation of the gospel, for the enlargement of the kingdom of God on earth. May the Lord give us the grace to release the money in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four activity that can end us reward in heaven is fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. In this contemporary world of ours, Satan and his hosts are rampaging because they are fighting their last battle to put down the spiritual structures of the elect of God here on earth. This is where we need to 
engaged Satan and his hosts in a very odd spiritual warfare. And that is it. And this is why the Bible enjoin us that we should pray without ceasing. We should pray without ceasing. We have to pray. We have to fast. So that the work of God can continue. So that we have to destroy, demolish the kingdom of darkness structure. To pray without ceasing is to always engage ourselves in spiritual warfare that we ultimately lead to the final defeat of Satan and the demonic host. Our success in spiritual warfare in this world will be highly rewarded when we get to heaven. Those who are successful in this spiritual warfare are regarded as overcomers. When we go to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, we can see the reward for overcomers. Anyone that is very successful in spiritual warfare will be rewarded highly in heaven. And let me tell you, brethren, without prayer and without fasting, we can never go far in life. In ministry, we can never, never, never go far. There are many things that cannot be achieved without prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. Matthew 17, 21. How be it? This can get not out but by prayer and fasting. When we pray and we fast as an input into the work of the kingdom, the work of the kingdom will be enlarging and enlarging and enlarging. If that is the only thing you can do, you may not even have money to spend, but if you can pray, you can go down your knee to pray from time to time. I can just assure you that the Almighty God Himself will reward you, will give you a great reward, a great reward in heaven. For every sacrifice of prayer and fasting we make, our reward is sure in heaven. And I pray that the Almighty God Himself will give us the grace to pray and to fast so that the kingdom of God will be enlarged in this world and so that the kingdom of darkness will be subdued to our prayer and fasting. And then when we get to heaven, at the judgment seat of Christ, we shall be rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the grace to spend our money for the sake of the gospel, for the propagation of the gospel. And I pray for the grace to be lost in prayer and fasting so that the work of the Great Commission can be highly successful in our own time. Shall we pray? Let's pray for the grace, the grace to be able to release our money for the propagation of the gospel. Pray for the grace to be able to pray and to fast for the enlargement of the kingdom of God and for the depopulation of the kingdom of darkness. Let's pray for the grace. In case you are hearing me now, in any nation of the world where you are hearing me, you still commit sin. Ah. Your prayer should be, oh God, forgive me my sin. Come to Jesus today, humble yourself before him and ask him for forgiveness of sin. He will forgive you. He will forgive and he will forgive you. He will write your name in the book of life. The great to God's number he will give unto you. Pray to God. Ask him to forgive you and become a child of God. Pray now, pray now, pray now. If you are already born again, pray for the grace to spend your money and financial resources and even material resources for the sake of the gospel, for the propagation of the gospel. And pray for the grace to pray and to fast. For all these things, we shall be rewarded in heaven when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And so, mighty Father, we want to bless your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this moment of truth today. I set our thanks in Jesus' name. We pray for the grace, Lord God Almighty,
to do all these things, to embark in every activity that we earn a reward in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. They get to spend our money, our financial resources, our material resources for the propagation of the gospel. The grace to pray and to fast for the enlightenment of the kingdom work on earth. Give all this grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who have confessed their sins before you today, save their social God and write their names in the book of life. And the great to God no more, give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, we pray that when we all appear before the great message of Christ, all of us today that listen to this message will be highly rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. And none of us will receive the reward of shame in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Once again, let somebody shout hallelujah.